Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. No, no, no. What is up, my exchange family from all over the world? And thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I'm your senior enlisted advisor for the Army and the Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guest today, I would like to introduce my lovely co-host, Emily Zars. How you doing, Emily? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm so I'm here in Orlando, Florida. I'm at uh, what we like to call here at AFIS uh, the express, express Conference, but the rest of the world calls it the Shop It. Uh, but it's Shop It Conference, and so I got some folks even coming in on me while I'm doing the show. I'm like, hey, I'm doing a show right now, but it's all good though. <laughs> How you doing? How you doing? I'm good. I'm I'm missing Kiana. It's just me and you today, but I guess you'll do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess I'll do. I'm I'm chopped liver today, so but I'm missing Kiana. So Kiana, enjoy your leave. But um, well, we got an awesome guest today. Uh, it's always good to have another airman on the show. Uh, so I'm I'm really real partial to this guest. So uh, without further ado, Emily, please introduce today's guest. Of course. Today we have a social media content creator and Air Force officer who has a passion for creating videos that showcase some of the coolest military and defense technology in the world. His videos have generated more than 52 million views worldwide. He joins us to talk about his love of content creation and his experience both in the Air Force and in his personal life. Please give a warm Chief Chat welcome to Sam Ekholm. Hey. Yeah! It's <laughs> awesome. Feeling the love, feeling the love. <laughs> How's it going? Can you let our viewers know where you're coming from? Yes, so I am coming here from lovely St. Louis, Missouri, you know, gateway to the west. Uh, it's a nice day today, too, so. And that's awesome. And I want to thank you, first and foremost, um, for your service to our country. Um, what inspired you to attend the Air Force Academy and join the military? Yeah, so I always kind of say that it was, um, it was probably my dad, right? So he was an Air Force pilot. Um, he's actually now flying uh, for American Airlines out of Dallas, Fort Worth. That's where I grew up. And I remember, you know, as I was growing up, I'd hear stories of him, you know, around the dinner table talking about when he was a cadet at the academy, jumping out of airplanes, going through survival training, getting to flying gliders. And I was like, what? You get to do that in college? That's somewhere you can go. And so a little bit of that mixed with just, I don't know, I had this crazy obsession with just wanting to fly or wanting to do something different than all my friends were doing. And so, you know, I was like, what better way to do that than go into uh, the Air Force Academy up against the mountains in Colorado Springs. So applied for that school when I was in high school, was super lucky to get accepted. Um, it was a lot of hard work too. And uh, that kind of <laughs> set the path for me running. And I uh, did four years there, graduated in 2018. And uh, then have been, you know, doing the Air Force thing and then doing videos ever since. Wow. So you said dad is uh, out of Dallas, Texas. So we're, we're, we're stationed in Dallas, Texas. And of course, I'm always on flights constantly, right? <laughs> and and, and yeah. primarily it's American Airlines. So how crazy would that be if your dad was the pilot for probably the majority of my flights? That'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. You know? I bet it's happened. So listen for Captain Seth Eckholm. He flies the Airbus. So, um, you know, you might be flying him and then go tell him what's up. Maybe he'll let you sit in the cockpit for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, listen, I'm, I'm going to name drop you. So, Sam, I'm, I'm just letting you know. <laughs> you should. So, you should. Give me a little selfie, Chief, and send me a little picture. I got you. So can you uh, share some more memorable moments while attending the Air Force Academy? I got a chance to actually go down there uh, about a month and yeah. a half ago and kind of check out the campus. And uh, I went into the bookstore where we have an exchange uh, at the bookstore. Yes. And, I, and I looked at the ceiling and they got all these freaking like names and stuff written in the ceiling. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's pretty cool. Yeah, we call it the C store. So that was my first experience to the exchange and what you guys do. Um, and it was a magical place because we got to go there two times during basic training. And uh, we were strictly not allowed to buy any candy or any food or any drinks. We could just get like an ironing board. So in my head, <laughs> as soon as I graduated basic training, I was like, I'm going back to that C store and I'm going to get myself like one of those milkshakes that you guys sell and 
some other stuff. So yeah, always got a little warm spot uh, in my heart for the C store at the Academy. But yeah, those names you see on the ceiling are for all the graduating classes. We'll get to sign the roof before we go. So that's a pretty cool thing that they do. But oh man, I don't even know where to start with the Academy. It was an incredible experience. Um, wow. It was a tough freshman year, a tough four years in general, but it's a great place to be from. Uh, best memories, just like my dad was getting to, you know, jump out of airplanes, flying gliders. Um, I spent a summer in Washington, D.C., interning on Capitol Hill. Um, I was on sports teams, intramurals. I did debate. I did mock trial. I, I just had a blast. It's such a close knit community. You know, it's the long blue line is what we call it. And it's really cool that you get a guaranteed job when you graduate. And um, yeah, it's, it's a family. So amazing opportunities and amazing experience there. And Sam, your love for making videos allowed you to educate the masses on aircraft and military technology. Where did you get the idea to start a YouTube channel on your passion? Yeah, so great question. So even going back to high school, I was just always into social media, making videos um, and doing that sort of thing. And, and, and YouTube and platforms like that are so cool because you can really create your own products, right? You don't necessarily have a director over you. You can kind of do what you want. And so for me, I just saw an opportunity with what I was doing in my life and my Air Force career to kind of take that and show other people what those opportunities and experiences are. So that's taken me all over the world. You know, I know you're playing a video right now when I was at Dias Air Force Base on a C-130. Um, I've flown in the back of fighter jets. I've done stuff with uh, a bunch of different Air Force uh, aircraft installations and joint too. I fired the uh, Army's like most powerful rocket launcher. I was, you know, getting bitten by military working dogs. Um, and I've just, I've had a blast. So really it came from just wanting to both follow my kind of passion of making videos, but also like educate and inspire other people. And like, hey, here are the opportunities available in the military. Let me just package it up and show it in a way that's easily digest digestible. I kind of do a little bit of a mix of like education and entertainment. You know, I take some inspiration from like my boy, Mike Rowe, Dirty Jobs, um, kind of put that spin on things. And it's just been really cool to see, you know, the reception it's gotten and people who have, you know, left a comment or left a message and been like, Sam, you, your videos are the reason I joined the military. Um, that, that's kind of what's made it all worth it for me. Awesome. And so one of your most popular videos, uh, you kind of gave us a, a sneak peek, a sneak peek behind the scenes of an F-35 fighter jet. And that, that yeah. got like <laughs> 1.3 million views, which is amazing. And so, so how did you get yes. that opportunity to visit Lockheed Martin in, in Fort Worth? That was a, that was a fun one. So I've always uh, like, I'm just kind of obsessed with the idea of taking these concepts that are super hard to understand, like building a F-35 fighter jet and kind of dumbing it down in a style that really anyone can experience and understand. And so, you know, Lockheed Martin is such a military friendly company. I mean, I don't know how many veterans they employ or former service members. So they invited me out. They loved my style. And they said, hey, Sam, come to Fort Worth, Texas. Let us show you the plant where we make the F-35. We'll put you in the simulator to fly it yourself. We'll let you put on the helmet, the cool little futuristic fighter pilot, pilot helmet. We'll let you meet our chief test pilot and we'll let you watch an F-35 kind of take off. So I was able to film the whole thing. It's it's one of the only videos out there where they've, you know, allowed someone to have that access. So I, I appreciate them for giving me that opportunity. And hopefully they appreciate me a little bit helping put together a video that did a million and a half views. So, <laughs> yeah. And so your channel is full of military experiences. You even had the chance to fire the U.S. Army's most powerful yes. rocket launcher. What was that like? <laughs> That was crazy. So that was a partnership I did with uh, the, actually the Colorado Army National Guard, their recruiting department. And so they were looking to kind of leverage whether you want to use the word influencers or just video creators to kind of bridge the gap and help bolster recruiting. So I remember they called me up and they were like, hey, Sam, we want you to fire this rocket launcher. And I was like, OK, um, is that safe? Like, what does that mean? Fire a rocket launcher. I was kind of like, that sounds cool. Like, sign me up. Let's go. Um, I then later found out that it was actually in Fort Chaffee, Arkansas in the middle of the summer. So I quickly gained a lot of respect for these army soldiers because they were spending like a month out there in the tents in like the hottest, most humid part of the country. Like, oh, it was just crazy. And so I was there filming with them for about a week. Um, and yeah, Chief, you've probably been in some hot environments doing your thing in your career. But like, 
I think in the Air Force, we have a little bit better sometimes because I was like, man, I am not used to this. <laughs> but it was it was amazing. So the HIMARS is an incredible machine. I mean, it fires rockets like three miles down range with like pinpoint accuracy. So I was able to do a feature on them. I got to talk about the soldiers, their career fields, um, the importance of their mission. And then the very end of the video, I was actually inside this thing and, and hit, hit the button um, that made the thing go boom and it. You know, my ears were ringing for probably about a week after, um, but that was an amazing project and just so awesome to work with um, such an incredible group of soldiers and kind of help tell their story. Yes, yes. So you you mentioned um, you know conditions that we've been in throughout <laughs> my career. So before I was a, before I was an airman, I was a marine, right? And so I spent my first four years oh. in the Marine Corps, and and so I've been in probably some some very very uh, trying conditions uh, to say the least. <laughs> Uh, and I tell you about my the first time I realized I was in the Air Force. So when I transferred from the Marines to the Air Force, uh, we we went. I went to tech tech school, and then uh, I was in. Uh, we had we had this like medical readiness uh, like week that we had to do in tech school, and so I walk into the tent, and there's like a air conditioning vi ventilation system going through the tent. I had never seen air conditioning in, in a tent in life. Right, the Marines they they don't. We, we put up a tent, the, the floor is literally the ground. Um, so the Air Force had like flooring, they had uh, yeah. air conditioner or heater or whatever you needed coming through the tents. It was like, man, I could live out here for like like six months if I needed to. Uh, but yeah, coming know, from the yeah. world, like, it's, it's just a different experience. It's a different experience. It was funny when I was out there with the Army, like they didn't have air conditioner either, but what they had is just a big bucket of ice that they would like, dip their faces in and i was like <laughs> all right guys i respect i respect that so <laughs> yeah no 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 I, th that's that's called air force appreciation man that's what they what you think. <laughs> <laughs> that's for sure <laughs> so so um a as you know we're coming up on pcs season and uh the exchange service is a great resource for service members and their families for processing uh you also have a youtube video that details what it's like to move in the military so what are some of the best practices or some movie hacks that you've learned over the years to help our military community. Yeah, and Chief, I'm sure you've got some good ones. But for me, I always like to say plan early. Like literally, I don't care how early, like start going through the mental process early because you know things are always going to come up. Hiccups are always going to come up. Like for me, like I was doing like a partial ditty move, moving my own stuff. And then I realized that my whole like tractor trailer little hitch I had like wasn't working the lights weren't working like the movers were here I needed to move out and I had to like drive halfway across the country like with a sketchy system going on in the back and I was like oh man this isn't great so plan planning early is a huge one and then the other thing I have is just plan for things to go wrong because then at least you know going in that hey something's gonna go wrong and you won't be super bummed and at least the spirit the you know the energy will be a little bit high but what about you chief I'd love to hear you know I'm sure you've done way more moves than I have well, no, no. So what I've learned about moving it is it doesn't matter if you're moving across the street or across the country. It sucks <laughs> all the way around. It, it's it just is the worst. not fun. It is, it is the worst thing ever. Uh, <laughs> and so big shout out to all, all my military folks that are, uh, you know, we, we just got a brand new staff sergeant and it changed. This is our first PCS. So she had to experience that whole thing. And it was, you know, yeah. it, it's 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 kind of, you know, eye opener for somebody that's never had to move across the country. <laughs> Uh, you know, you, you come out a new or, person. You know, yeah, <laughs> you do. You do. And so yeah, it's... Uh, that, that and, and I heard that you got to get a new toaster and a new you got to get a, a new coffee maker and a new toaster every move is what somebody told me. I was like, nah, I've been just reusing that old toaster with all the crumbs in there and just get it all over my stuff. So, uh, yeah, that's that's true. At least you get a lot of new toasters in. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and so Sam, you're approaching your fourth year in the Air Force. Can you share some advice with those looking to join the service or people who have recently started their Air Force careers? Yeah, so I get this question a lot. You know, luckily, just with the videos I do, I got a lot of younger kids interested in joining the military. They'd be like, Sam, you know, what's your advice? What can I do? And I always kind of tell them, hey, the biggest thing is first know what you're getting yourself into. Um, I'd love to say the military is for everyone, but you know, it might not be. And if you come in as someone who's motivated, passionate, and who kind of knows what they're getting themselves into, that's going to go a lot farther than someone whose parents forced them to, 
or who just was in it for the wrong reasons. Now, with that being said, once you're in, the biggest thing you can do is just have an open mind, like be the type of person that other people want to work with. Um, be excited, have a smile on your face and be ready to hit the ground running because these opportunities, a lot of them that I've been able to take advantage of, those don't just come to people. You've got to work for them and you've got to have a good work ethic, a positive attitude. Um, and then really like the sky is the limit on what you can do. Um, there are so many opportunities in the military and a lot of people I feel like don't always take them um, for whatever reason that is. So if you want to have an awesome career, a prosperous career, um, you want to see the world, you want to get some cool assignments, it all starts from day one, literally the reputation you're making. So I try to share that with people, not to intimidate them, but to motivate them. And, you know, it worked for me and I'm sure it worked for Chief and I'm sure it's worked for a lot of other people. And, you know, instilling that in the young kids from the very beginning is a, is a big thing. Yeah, that's, that's awesome advice. And so we, we have a lot of the military community kind of watching a lot of us right now. And I got, I got like a two-part question. So I'll ask you the first part and then I'll, I'll circle back sure. around so you can give me some parenting advice. Uh, so we got, we got viewers that are looking <laughs> looking uh, at their own social media brand. So what message would you like to share out at Nation Heroes about uh, doing the social media uh, content creator or influencer? What, what do you consider yourself as an influencer or content creator? What's... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I've always considered myself a content creator. I mean, I guess what comes with having people watch your stuff is maybe the, uh, the influencer thing. But hey, I mean, I, I just like to say I'm just a guy that makes videos. So um, yeah, I mean, it's crazy. The Air Force actually and the military encourages airmen to share their stories because it can help inspire someone else to want to join, you know, join the military. And um, so, hey, and you know, if that's something you're passionate about, you know, the, the hardest thing is putting yourself out there, but you know, just make sure you're doing it right. Obviously in the military, we got to be worried about things like, you know, operational security, you know, making sure you're, you're adhering to all the rules and regulations. But, um, you know, I've just enjoyed kind of paying it forward. I, you know, I remember watching YouTube videos and watching content of people before me. That was the reason I kind of went into the air force too. So kind of being able to put my spin on that and, uh, doing what I love. Um, that's, that's been kind of my bit best advice I'd say. Awesome. And so this, my second part of my question is, is so for us parents, right? So I'm a Gen X, Y, and you got the baby boomers, <laughs> and we just don't really understand, uh, you know, the social, well, we understand the social media space, but uh, our kids, you know, they look at other influencers and they're like, oh, I can make a bazillion dollars uh, on YouTube <laughs> because this five-year-old has 10 million followers and, uh, and they're just imagining yeah. what their salary is. And so, um, so what advice do you have for us parents that are like yeah do we support our kid that the 15 year old that wants to do youtube videos are we like listen i'm gonna need you to start working at mcdonald's uh and maybe work your way up to give you some type of income before you think you're gonna just jump off the porch and uh so i think sometimes we have as parents we have a dilemma on uh yeah how far do we kind of support our uh, our kids and stuff that we don't understand so you know there's a lot of parents who don't understand people watching other people do things and how that caused this huge, like, I don't know, uh, I don't want to say phenomenon, I it's just the norm, right? I hear you. Yeah, you know, it's almost like that phrase, you're, you're, you're crazy until you're not, right? Like an idea is crazy until it works. So I know to a lot of people, the idea of social media and, you know, doing it full time is kind of a crazy thing, but there's a lot of people doing it. But what I will say, Chief, is like, it is competitive. It is hard. So I don't think there's anything wrong with, you know, you know, working a job and then trying to do it on the side first. And I think the most important thing is you shouldn't go into it with, you know, wanting to make money or wanting to make it a living. Like you should go into it because you truly enjoy creating videos or sharing stuff on social media. The rest of that stuff will come later. If you do a good job, that will come later. Like even still to this day, I do what I do, not for anything other than I just like making videos and kind of sharing my story and sharing experiences with other people. And so to your kids, to anyone else's kids, like if that's the reason they're doing that, then I'd recommend you guys try and support that because then you know it's gonna be something they're interested in for the long term and hopefully the quality of what they're doing is good too. So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense, but uh, that's kind of what I try to hold myself to as well. So, so Trey, Ape, Xavier and Isaac, y'all listening? Listen, we have to <laughs> make sure that y'all do it. I'm talking to my kids right now. Make sure we're not doing do it for money. the right make reasons, sure guys. Do it, do it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that will come later. Yeah. And Sam, you actually just said it, but you refer yourself um, as just a kid with a camera. What has been your biggest motivation for making your videos? 
Yeah. So kind of like I said, the way it all started was I wanted to share my experience with other people to kind of give them an idea of those opportunities out there in the military. And, you know, that's kind of grown and grown to where now I'm able to branch out and do projects with different branches and different aspects of things that I never even knew I'd be able to do. Um, and it's just been so cool to see the positive response and the people who have been able to look at my stuff and be like, Hey Sam, you know, you're the reason I wanted to join the military or your videos, you know, really inspired me to look into this or good to go this route. So that is the biggest reason that I do it right there is, um, you know, like I said, when I was going through the process of wanting to find, you know, Hey, it's the military for me, I would have liked there to be, have been some more content out there. That's kind of explaining different career fields, different opportunities, what is out there, what's in the realm of possibility. And so hopefully I can be that to some younger kids out there, or even older people who are interested, or even just, just the general public and, you know, who's interested in what we do or these cool aircraft or technology, et cetera. Um, it's really for the people watching. And then, you know, I just get enjoyment out of it too, because I'm a gearhead. I love filming and I love traveling and um, it's just been fun. So I always say, like you said, I'm a kid with the camera, that's it. Um, and I'm having fun doing it. Well, we definitely appreciate you. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Did I interrupt you? What were you going to say? No, 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 it's all you. Oh, I, I was um, going to jump into the comments. Oh, okay, um, yeah. We just. Gotcha. So, no, I just wanted to kind of uh, throw something okay. out there. So, just thanking him yeah. for doing that because when I came in, all I had to do, all I had was the recruiter and a brochure. And so, some old <laughs> brochure that was. That probably was super outdated, and whatever my recruiter decided to tell me, uh, that that's all I knew about the military because I didn't have a lot sure. of family members in the military. So, uh, the fact that you're putting that content out there for our our, our potential service members, uh, just just to give them an idea of what they're maybe getting into, I think that's amazing. So, thank you for that. And I'll tell you, it was like a full circle moment. I, I, I still, to this day, I get videos where recruiters are actually playing my videos in their recruiting stations, like on the TVs when people oh, walk awesome. in. And I'm like, hey, look at that. That's pretty cool. So, <laughs> yep. That's awesome. And Sam, um, we want to thank you so much for, for jumping on with us today. We have people watching um, from all over the world. Um, you're getting so much love um, in the comments. We did have a question from Marisa. She said, she asked, Sam, do you have a dream behind the scenes video you'd like to do? <laughs> um, well, yeah, I mean, I have a bunch of just dream videos. I keep a list on my phone of, of things I want to do. <laughs> and I'm just trying to trying to knock them off the list, you know, like it started as, hey, I want to fly in the backseat of a fighter jet, you know, check that one off the box. And then there's some other ones I've got, which I don't want to spoil because I've got some stuff in the works that I'm really excited about. But yeah, I mean, I don't know. I'd love to know what, what everyone else wants to see. I always try to look at my comments and look at my DMs and be like, hey, what are people interested in? Because I want to do that. Like I recently just filmed a video with the E3 Sentry, which is the aircraft with the big flying rotating radar dome. And, you know, that wasn't on my list, but a lot of people were requesting that one. So I made it happen. And it's been awesome to kind of see people in the comments be like, hey, I used to work on that. This is bringing back old memories. Like, wow, I had never gotten this close of an exclusive look. So I'd fire that question right back to her be like, like, hey, what do you want to see? Uh, let me know. Send me a message and let's make it happen. No, no. Tell Marissa that Chief Chat was on his bucket list and, and he's just checked it off. So <laughs> he's done. That that is checked off. So <laughs> that was I the ultimate bucket list. <laughs> that was actually the top of the list. So I'm going to have to reevaluate my goals going forward because I already hit the top. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. So, awesome. yes. I don't know if you had any more comments or questions. No, 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 I just wanted to thank, um, thank you again, and everyone's just really excited you're here. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So, well, I know you, you can't, some of it's G14 classified, but uh, we, we definitely want to figure out if you got anything ahead or any new projects you can kind of share with us. I know you don't want to jinx some of your projects, but uh, anything that you can share? Yeah. I'll give you a hint. There's a lot of firepower coming up. So if you like things wow. going boom, then, uh, you know, maybe pay close attention to the channel because there's going to be some uh, some good stuff. Okay, man. Okay. 
<laughs> I'm, I'm tuned in. I'm locked in. Good. I expect to see you there, Chief, in the comments. <laughs> And before we say goodbye, can you please remind our viewers where they can go to follow you and keep up with you? Sure. So I keep it easy. It's just Sam Eckholm across all my social media. Boom. There you go. Um, hit me up. It's uh, yeah, nice, fun community. Try to put out videos at least monthly, more if we can. And um, there's a lot more coming. So appreciate you guys giving me the opportunity to come on and shout out to the exchange. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. So uh, for our Chief Chat viewers, uh, this episode will be available on YouTube and Spotify. You can rewatch with your friends or catch up with past episodes. Also, be sure to join us at 11 a.m. Central, May 17th, when Chef Andre Rush joins the chat. And then tune in again at 11 a.m. Central on May 26th, when we welcome CBS News correspondent Steve Hartman to discuss TAPS Across America. Uh, Sam, once again, thank you so much uh, for spending some time with us today. Uh, it's it's awesome to see, because I think you're our first kind of social media content creator or, <laughs> or, or influencer as we, we've labeled on the show. So that's a, that's a milestone for Chief Chat. So thank you for joining us. Sure. Well, thanks for having me. Thanks for stepping into that new realm, the realm of the unknown. But uh, it's been fun. <laughs> Wish you guys all the best and um, hope your next few episodes go good too. So. See you guys. Awesome, awesome. So if you don't, if you don't mind uh, hanging back uh, with us for sure. our formal goodbyes and we go off to live, but uh, again, thank you so much. This means a lot to our, our nation's heroes. Uh, and and your, your hair is just killer. Like I'm, I'm fixated on, on the do so bad. Keep that going for as long as you can. <laughs> I'll try. I'll try. We'll do. I'm luckily the Air Force extended their hair rags a little bit, so we're we're doing well. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome, awesome. So uh, we wish you all the best. And uh, again, just stay on uh, till after the live so we can say our forms goodbyes. Will but, do. Uh, thank you. And uh, Chief, Chief, shout out.